Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so this video was a part of the other subnetting video that I created. Um, I wanted to break this apart because this talks about what a VLAN is and why VLANs are more used than an actual subnet. If you want to get a good understanding of why subnets are a thing, go ahead and watch that previous video. If you're here to watch what a VLAN is and why it's better than subnets, just stick around. All right, so we just got done explaining a little bit what a subnet is. Uh, we explained the problem that subnets solve. But now I want to talk about something else. So now, prior to this, I got like three, four more pages about subnetting, but I realized that it's kind of unnecessary information. Um, it gets to really in-depth about how to break down subnets, how to write subnets, how to configure subnets, and how many hosts and clients are on it, and it has all the mathematics that involve it. But I realized that you don't need to know that because there's something else that exists out there that's more common in the uh, professional space than in actual subnets. Now, subnets exist. You've got the basic understanding of it. But there's something else you need to know about that you see more likely in the workplace, and that's a VLAN. So we're going to go over what a VLAN is really briefly and uh, what it actually does and what problem it solves as well. All right, let's talk about what a VLAN actually is first. A VLAN is a virtual local area network. Segments a physical network into multiple isolated virtual networks, improving management and security. Devices in the same VLAN can communicate as if they are on the same network. Now you know what a VLAN is. Let's go ahead and compare the two. So subnets are physical. They're, they're more physical than what a VLAN is. VLANs are more virtual. So Okay, so subnets, you need additional hardware for it to work effectively. So you're going to need routers in between each point and each segregated network to communicate with one another and when it comes to vlans uh, all you have to have is a vlan capable switch and you're able to have all the devices be segregated and also on the same network at the same time without any additional hardware so this route the subnetting route is very expensive if you do it that way and it's much easier and more common to do it the vlan way so all you have to do on the switch is to have it configured where i say all right well if this client is plugged into port one I want that to be VLAN 1, VLAN 1, and I want this port, port 2, to be plugged into this client or this network and have that be VLAN 2, so, and so on and so on. So all you got to do is configure the ports for what VLAN you want, and it'll segregate the network for you without any additional hardware. For everything I just showed, that's the reason why I stopped explaining subnets i could have went a lot deeper um, but i think it's not necessary i think you get the bare bones with this video and everything that i went through um i gave you the solution and the problem um and why we needed subnets and why we need vlans um there's a lot of device congestion and maybe to learn something today maybe you want to experiment with vlans yourself you can go ahead and buy a vlan capable switch and practice on your own but i can tell you from my experience out there working in the field I rarely see this at all. I mean, you can have a combination of both, but what I really see more or less is this because it's just, it's more cost effective. It's easier to manage than physical hardware. So you don't really see this that much. That's why I stopped getting into it. Now, back when I went to school, we, we spent, I think I saw a whole semester on it. We really broke down how to even configure networks and how to create subnets and how to calculate how many hosts and I, uh, clients we need. But it's not really necessary because I'm not, I don't want to teach you something that kind of not practice. So just keep in mind that VLANs are more or less used in the work field. But it's good to know what subnet is. Um, it's still used all the time, but more or less it's going to be you're going to see that 255, 255, 2550 subnet because it's just a kind of a basic one. And uh, you're not really going to see much difference out there. But it's good to know what that is. Uh, my prior video was what an IP address is. So I'm going to keep these videos short and sweet and to the point. And the, we might, if these videos do well, we'll dive in deeper. But I want to get into the VLANs a little bit more because that's more of uh, what you see out there in the, the work field nowadays. Um, it's just more cost effective, but it's good to know these things. Um, well, you need the thing is, do you really need to know uh, anything further than a subnet? I kind of come up with this analogy. I went to college. I studied. Uh, I did calculus two. I did uh, trigonometry. I did uh, probability statistics. I did all these advanced math classes, and I don't use any of them. I probably have lost ninety percent of what I learned at college because I just don't use it every day. It's just not necessary for me to know. Uh, if you're going to be a network uh, administrator or a network specialist or an engineer. 
you're going to need that. You're going to need that special uh, knowledge. Uh, you're probably going to use it every day, so you won't lose it. So, But for most people, as long as you know the base level and what to look at and understand why it's so important and why it's used, I think that's about as much as you need. So thank you for coming to this video. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. It's, I really do appreciate the support. And uh, remember, safety is an illusion. I'll see you in the next video.